Marino Show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Marino Show. I am so excited about our guest today. Anyone who knows me knows that I am a huge horror movie fan. As you can see, the Halloween poster behind me. Halloween, the original 1978 John Carpenter masterpiece, is my favorite horror movie of all time and has been since I was a young kid. And today I'm interviewing Sandy Johnson, who played Judith Myers, Michael Myers' sister in the original Halloween. Uh, I almost called you Judith. Sandy, thank you so much <laughs> for being with me today. Uh, you're so welcome. And thank you for inviting me. And a lot of people call me Judith. <laughs> you know, I, I would imagine that's kind of become a thing for you. You know, I'll start with a pretty big question here. What has it meant to be a part of this iconic film? I mean, we're 40 plus years later. You've seen like the last kind of reboots with Halloween, Halloween Kills, and there's a resurgence in people finding this film. For you though, what has it meant? Because you were really in a pivotal scene at the beginning of the franchise where Michael kills his sister, Judith, and that's really what got this whole franchise started. So how does it feel to be a part of that? <laughs> Well, it's totally awesome. It's also like a huge responsibility because it, it's such an important role to so many people. And so that makes it really important to me to make sure that I don't let people down and that I actually really live up to that um, iconic person. So yeah, it is important to me. The film is wonderful. It's my favorite horror film too. And I'm just, I'm just so proud to be a part of it. Yeah. And do you have anything that stands out to you about making the film that you remember? Was there any kind of memories that you took away from that? Even working with John Carpenter? I mean, what do you remember when you think back on that time? I think about a very busy set with a lot of people doing, or a few people doing a lot of jobs and um, I remember that John Carpenter and Deborah Hill were very nice and easy to work with and gave good explanations of what they wanted. So I remember being relaxed, which was a good thing because my other films had been comedies and this was definitely not a comedy. <laughs> and so it was different. So it was nice to have, um, have them be good at putting me at ease. So I, I remember it being a comfortable set and it was it was a fun shoot. I enjoyed playing Judith. The couch scene was a lot of fun and just, yeah, it was just, it was just a good day. And how long did that scene actually take to make? Because I know he had like the steady cam coming into the house, coming around the house, which was really at the time was uh, that was kind of a first, right? Kind of what he was doing with with filmmaking at that time. Mm -hmm. Right. It was definitely considered cutting edge. And they practiced that part of it quite a bit, just because it was complicated to get it all around the house and up the stairs and to the kitchen and up the other stairs and the whole deal. So it was a pretty complicated shot. So they did practice it a lot to make sure that there was nothing in the shots that they didn't want to be there because it was small rooms with you know several people in there so with mirrors and things so you have to be careful so I remember them doing that and then the actual we we practiced my scene a few times and then we actually got it in two takes oh with the the stabbing and all of that in two takes wow um have you been back to the original house? I know they moved it from where it was originally in the film. It's now like, I've been there. It's in a different corner and it might be a real estate office or something. Um, it's in some kind of different, it's a business of some sort. Right. I have not been there. I, uh, I was hoping to go there when I was in Pasadena for Halloween 40, but it was my first con. And so I was <laughs> too busy to go anywhere. I had a lot of people there to see me. So that was really my first priority. So maybe next time I will get a chance to go. But I have been to the uh, Myers House, North Carolina, which is the exact replica of the house, at least on the outside. And I did some uh, photo shoots there that are on my website pretty often. And that was, that was an amazing experience as well. 
And on your website, because I've been on it, you have a lot of different pictures of you as Judith Myers, and you said about taking pictures there in North Carolina. What kind of thing things will fans find on your website? I'm sure they've already gone there because you know the Halloween fan base is a pretty, you know, dedicated bunch. So what can fans find if they visit your website? Well, they can find lots of photographs that they can get signed, both uh, classic ones as well as more recent ones. They can find some jewelry. They can find uh, scarves for the ladies that have like skulls hanging from them. They can send in things to be signed. And uh, there's one T-shirt I have that uh, says a wee bit wicked, which is a rhinestone shirt that's kind of fun for the, for the ladies. So uh, I guess that's it. Most and there's one poster that's of the tombstone that I can sign. So there's several things on. I have some more things I'm working on to put up there, so it'll continue to grow. And in recent years, you've been taking part in like different horror festivals, horror cons. Can you talk about that? Because I know that that's a really big thing, you know, especially for people like myself or other people who are fans of this franchise that they actually get to meet some of the people that do mean so much to them being connected to this film. What has that experience been like for you? It has probably changed my life <laughs> more than anything, at least recently. Um, it, it's just amazing. They, they are the most incredible community that I've ever been a part of. And I mean, they just like suck me right in. <laughs> and it's been, it's been so much fun meeting them all. I've met a lot of really good friends and, um, they, they send me amazing things. I mean, it's just, it's just been, a, it's a blast. I look forward to each and every one of them and I'm always sad when they're over. And then I just have to, when we get to that time of year when there aren't any for like four or five months, it's like, oh no. Also, you know, for a while, did you kind of, I don't know if you took a break from acting, but did you recently get into the, the horror con world and kind of what got you to embrace that? And if you did stop acting, what, what led to that? And how did you kind of find your way back in? And, and cause you're very visible now, you know, with your social media and being in the, the horror festival circuit. Right. Well, I was, um, when I was in California and still making films, I got married and then I got divorced. And about that same time, I lost both of my parents to cancer within a very short period of time. And I just kind of was extremely depressed. So I decided to go home to Texas. And when I got to Texas, I decided to become a teacher. So I switched careers entirely for about 30 years. <laughs> and, um, and then a, a few years ago, I guess it was the summer of 2018, my current agent, Rick and Reek, he found me. He had been looking for me for about eight years and he found me and asked me if I would be interested in him being my agent and to go to cons and stuff. And I said, OK, that sounds like fun. So that's kind of where it started. And so for the last four years now, I guess. I have been going to cons and then uh, some people were interested in me doing movies again. So I've gotten back into that as well. I would have loved to have said that I, my teacher was Michael Myers, sister Judith Myers. That would have been <laughs> so awesome. What did you teach? Were you like a, a middle school, elementary school, high school? Most of my teaching career, I was middle school science. Okay. That's awesome. That's not something I knew. Well, that's great. And thank you for, you know, your service and teaching. That's a very important job, as you know. Um, now being back in, you know, kind of the film world, you said that you're getting back into acting. Are there any projects coming up that, that you like to talk about that you can talk about that you're working on? Sure. I have um, I just, I finished two cameo films where I just had small roles. One of them was for a Hungarian film called Vulps, The Lust for Revenge, 
which was a sequel to a prior one that was just Volps. And then it had something after it other than The Lust for Revenge. But it was very good. And I had commented on it because I thought it was so good. And then the director said, you know what, if you like it that much, how about if you do a cameo in the new one? And I said, OK. So it hasn't come out yet. I expect it any time. And I think it'll be quite good because the, the first one was excellent. And then I did a cameo in a film called uh, Halloween Slasher, which I think might still be filming. And so hopefully it'll be out, you know, before too long. The other films that I'm doing, I have um, good roles in, not just cameos. The one of them is called um, Bloody Hatchet. And in that one, I play a mother and I'm um, a lot of it is flashback scenes to when my child was young. And so the role will be shared by two different people and I will pay, uh, be the lady in the flashback or I will be the one in the current time and she will be in the flashback. Sorry. Um, so I'm excited about that one. It's, it's a really interesting role and I like it. Then I have another one that is called, um, uh, hang on, it'll come to me, The Executioner. And in that one, they're actually developing the role to give me a bigger part. So I haven't seen, I haven't seen the final script yet, but the good news is they've decided to make it larger. So that's good. And then another one I'm really excited about because it's filmed in Texas and it's a Western. Um, the film was originally a horror movie and it's being remade as a Western, which is a really interesting concept, but it's called Bullets for Jesus. And it's, I mean, I, if you, when you see the script or see the movie, you'll know why it would have made a great conversion from a horror movie to a Western, but I'm, I'm real excited about that one. And um, we're supposed to shoot that in May. So I think that'll be the first one unless something changes with the scheduling. That's so exciting to hear that you're involved in all of these films and being in Texas, we're based in Austin, Texas. And I, and I saw that you were born in San Antonio. So that's pretty awesome. You need to come and visit and hopefully there'll be another horror con. I know you had mentioned before we started the interview that uh, they had canceled the one due to COVID that was supposed to happen in San Antonio a few years ago. Right, so I'm, I'm hoping they'll do another one. Yeah, that would be great. So you're in a lot of horror movies, obviously. You're an icon in that world. Was there a movie growing up that that you watched as a as a young person that that really scared you or that, you know, what was it about horror movies that kind of led you in that direction? Well, it's kind of interesting because my father was from Oklahoma. He was very conservative, but for some reason, as I look back in time, he took me to all the horror <laughs> movies. <laughs> so uh, it just, it seems so out of place when I think back. I mean, I loved him dearly. He was a wonderful man. But when I think, when I think back and say, you know, it was my dad that got me into horror movies. It, it just seems like it's a misfit there. But he started me out with the blob at the movie theater uh, in a terrible hail thunder storm. And so I definitely remember that when I was little. And then uh, another one that he took me to that left scars, I'm sure, was a movie called Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. Oh, I love that movie. Betty Davis, Joan Crawford. Yes, that, that is scary. That is a very intense psychological thriller for sure and I was still pretty young when I saw that so I, I'm still afraid of that movie <laughs> I didn't see that one until I was a lot older and um I think what's scary about that is that it could like that could really happen it's the family dynamic the sister dynamic and the jealousy yeah yeah I think that is what's scary because it could really happen and then I guess um just straight horror I really like The Shining and Scream and um, who, uh, Psycho. Yeah, Psycho is great. And of course, you know, there's a tie to Halloween with that as Jamie Lee Curtis 
And then Janet Lee was her mom, of course, in Psycho. So that's awesome. So you were in some uh, some other movies throughout, you know, your t- like 70s, like Hots, Gas Pump Girls. Um, and those are very different films from Halloween. You were also Playmate, June 1974. So you, you know, you had, you were on a path at that point. How did you get, again, get the role of, of Judith Myers? How did that come to fruition for you? I think that I got that role because of Playboy. They were looking for an actress that was comfortable with the nudity that was um, young enough for that role. And they found me through the Playboy agency. So I'm assuming that at, at, at least that's what got me the, the original interview. Yeah. Do you remember like the audition process at all? Or was it a short audition process or was it long? Do you remember anything about it specifically? I remember that it was in the house and I'm assuming probably one of the houses from Halloween. And it was, um, I think Deborah Hill and John Carpenter and some other people were there. We were just sitting at a table and they gave me the script and asked me to read you know, several different parts. And at one point they asked me to scream. <laughs> so I did that. And I remember thinking that was kind of weird because it was a residential residential area. And I kind of wondered what the neighbors might think, but I'm assuming they were used to plenty of screaming by that point in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. So I, I do remember that. It, I don't think it was a particularly long interview. And I just remember th- thanking them. And then a day or two later, my agent called me and said that I had been cast as Judith. Were you surprised? Um, Cause you know, I've read back when Halloween came out, you know, it, it became a really big movie in terms of financial success for an independent picture, but it, it wasn't like what it is, I guess today that sort of started happening over the years. Were you surprised when it did start kind of finding that not just cult following, but a huge following as maybe more people discovered it or it just took on a life of its own? Well, I guess the strangest thing about all that is that, like I said, I lost my parents. I got a divorce. I was so out of touch with Hollywood at the point when I left California to come back to Texas. And then I was just kind of trying to get a new life and get over my sadness for all of those reasons. And I really didn't tune in at all to any of my films or what was going on with any of that. The truth is, if you had asked me five years ago or had told me that Halloween was a big success or something, I would have been totally shocked because when my agent found me and told me that I said, he said, you know, you have thousands of fans and it's a, it's a very iconic film and the fans would love to meet you. And I'm just like going, what? I mean, I was just totally uh, oblivious. I had never Googled my name or anything. Um, So when he starts telling me all this stuff, I was just like, I, I mean, I just, I just thought, is he like a total, crazy guy that just reached <laughs> me from the morning he's making all this stuff up or is what he's saying real so of course I started to research and and figured out within an hour or so that he was right but um no so I didn't know and I didn't know until 2018 when he got a hold of me that Halloween actually had many sequels and was now an iconic film known around the world it must be nice though like as you said earlier because you kind of were so disconnected from it to kind of see the outpouring of love for the film and for your role in the film, because even though it wasn't a huge role, it was a pivotal, it it was the, what set up the whole series. So that has to be great to know that like a a great surprise, right. To kind of see that. (laughs) It was a great surprise. And it, like I said, it's, it's changed my life and opened me a whole up to a whole different community. And now I have, um, you know, so many good friends and everything that I've met at cons and different places. So uh, it's, it's been really fun. I'm older in life and it's great to have so such an exciting thing happen to me again. (laughs) Do you ever keep up with 
um, the actor that was with you at the beginning of the movie, your boyfriend, I think his, the actor's name was David Kyle. Have you run into him or ever seen him maybe at a horror con or I don't know if he's doing any of those, but. Yeah, I did meet him um, at age 40. He was there and he said the reason why he came was because I was there and it was the only con he had done, but he, he just thought that would be really fun. So he was at the table next to me. So we got to chat. He, he's actually written a book and he autographed it for me. And, um, but he doesn't care for con. So he just did that one. He lives kind of a reclusive life, I think in Colorado, someplace like that. And uh, I think he, he doesn't feel well a lot of the times. So he just, he doesn't like to do a lot of traveling and stuff, but he was very nice. It was fun to reminisce and, and uh, see him again. Oh, that's cool. That would have been fun to be there and to see that. Speaking of autographing things though, what's the maybe strangest or oddest thing somebody has asked you to autograph? Well, there, there was one thing that was very cool. It was a handmade um, Myers house that, was a, just a beautiful replica and it was uh it had a music box in it so it it played the halloween theme the soundtrack and um they had me sign it so that was that was very cool i enjoyed that has it been fun being able to kind of travel around and do these different shows just kind of seeing different places in the country as well yeah it's been really fun I've been, I have been all over the place, Pasadena, I've been to Maryland, New Jersey, Cincinnati. I mean, I've been just so many places and it's, uh, and, and it's been fun to meet all the different people and hear all the different accents. <laughs> it's just been, yeah, it's great. I'm looking forward. To, uh, Tennessee is where my husband's from. So that'll be a fun one. Always a challenge to try and understand what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, then I have one in Texas. I will be at the uh, Texas Haunters Convention in July, which is in Mesquite. And then I'm going to be, um, let's see, the one in New, in New Jersey is Atlantic City. Then I'm going to be one in Ocean, Ocean something. It's a car show, a big car show. Ocean City or Oceanside. Maryland or something maybe um so I understand it's beautiful there and they're going to have the um the original Halloween station wagon there so I'm going to be there with the car that's I didn't even know they still had the original Halloween car well the car was actually originally it was a rental and the people that found it um they found it it had been in like somebody's barn or something because they had just bought it as a rental and it had been there all these years and the guys tracked it down by VIN number bought the car it, it wasn't in particularly great shape so they had it completely restored it is gorgeous so when I was in Chicago they had the car there so I got to take pictures in it I got to sign it in several places and uh, uh, Nick Castle was there so they did uh, photo shoots with him in it. It was a great, it was a great con and the car is just beautiful. And for those who don't know, Nick Castle played the shape in the original. Um, as far as the future goes, I know you've said you're, you have several films that you've made and are looking forward to working on. Would you like to continue going down that road and making more films or what do you see in, in your future in terms of acting and, and just what's around the corner? Yes, I absolutely hope that I can continue to juggle all of these things and stay healthy so that I can enjoy them and get some travel in. There are some international films that I'm hoping to be able to complete. Uh, one of those is, what is um, called Gym Creeps. Uh, gym is in a place you work out and then creeps. And uh, I have a nice role in it and I'm hoping to be able to do that film. We hope to do it this year, but it didn't work out. Or last year, it, it's because of COVID and different things that have slowed us down. But I actually do the, the singing for the soundtrack in that one, which is kind of cool. 
Oh, so do you actually sing too then? Was that something that was part of your kind of uh, your roles or in, in maybe the 70s or when you were acting before? When I was younger, I did sing. It wasn't uh, professionally, but I did sing. I had voice lessons. Um, my first husband and I sang at like weddings and things like that. Um, but he decided he wanted me, he thought it'd be fun if I could do the singing for, the, for one of the soundtracks in this. So we actually did that uh, last October when I was in the UK for the con for the love of horror. We went to a sound studio and, and recorded it and they used synthesizers and made it real creepy and it's awesome. I love it. Is there anything that you want to say just to the fans the, of the Halloween franchise? Um, well, the number one thing is I love you all. And I'm so thankful that I have you in my life now and that you interact with me every day on social media and that you come out to see me at cons because I just, I love that. And I miss you <laughs> when, when we're not together. Is there anything else that you want to add? If any of you are on my, the real Sandy Johnson Facebook and you would be willing to switch to my other fan Facebook, it would be nice because I'm coming up on my limit again, you know, Facebook limits you at like 5,000 or something. So I don't really want to take people off. So if they, if they switch on their own to my fan page, it actually helps me out. And it's the exact same posts. I post the same things there. But um, so that would be helpful if they do that. And I hope they'll check out my website. And speaking of my website, it is unicornsandyj.com. And unicorn is the name because my agent named me his unicorn because I was the mythical, magical creature he thought he would never find. <laughs> so, so glad he did find you. So I liked the name. I thought that was cute. So it's unicornsandyj.com. You know, I wondered about that. I wondered because your email's that too from the from the website page. So that's a that's a nice little tidbit. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Sandy, so much for joining me on the show today. I've enjoyed our conversation and learned so many different things about the Halloween franchise. And I just want to tell you again, as a true fan of the franchise and of the film. I, I appreciate you. I'm so glad that you agreed to talk to me. Um, this is like a dream come true. So thank you so much for doing this. You are so welcome. It's my pleasure. And I hope to see you at a con sometime. Uh -huh.